just like a project, like a mixtape or something, because I've been working on music. As soon as I dropped my first, but yeah, my first album, Broke Arms Make Money, I wanted to work immediately on something else, on something else because I fucking took too long of a break and I'm not taking a long break again. It's, as soon as I get home, I'm wrapping everything up and it'll be out soon, real soon. To be honest, I don't remember meeting this dude. I don't remember meeting him at all. It just like kind of happened. And from there, I, I can't remember. I can't tell you a specific time because I don't remember it. It's like we it just, we do these things at Daily Bread, so Daily Bread's a clothing company at Pittsburgh that we do a lot with, and they have these things called First Friday, and they're just parties like every first Friday of the month. And I think it was Chew and the Come Up and somebody else, and I was the DJ for it, and I just DJed the thing, whatever. And we just started talking kind of from there. And every time he would come to Pittsburgh, I'd just I'd meet up with him because I'd be around, blah, blah, blah. We would just kind of go do our own thing, go out, get drunk. And it started out as more of a friendship than, like a, than a DJ thing. And then we're like, well, we have chemistry kind of already just being together. So let's try it out on stage. And we did it a couple times. As far as Mac and Wiz go, they, they had a huge impact on the industry. As far as like being from somewhere that's so unknown at, at at that time when they were blowing up both of them, but right now I think it's it's different because now it's like they're waiting to see. It's like a show improves on them. Like we already got two artists, so who's next? You know what I mean? They kind of push the door open with the mentality of, look, you don't have to, because Pittsburgh's a small market, you know, and there's a lot of talent there. But with small markets, if you're not Atlanta, you're not New York, you're not LA there's just not as many eyes on you and it makes it hard for smaller markets to get you can have the talent but you might not get the look they kind of pushed the door open and said well, you can do this without having this major recognition and this major push just go out there do your thing work hard and get the people behind you get your area behind you and they really kind of drew the blueprint of you get your city behind you and you force yourself in there like i mean that's really all it takes <laughs> I mean, we tied in our division. Wait, so who are you tied with? These giant motherfuckers. <laughs> but, you know, so I mean, it's not a terrible season, but when it first started, I was like so distraught. I was like, damn, these niggas is like not about to do anything because we lost all our star players. Chip, fucking Kelly, you know. You hopefully. Have star players. <laughs> you hear this guy? I just, I just remember you guys had some guy that did what? LeSean McCoy. Oh, okay. Oh, I remember right. that guy. Right. But I also right. remember that, was that guy. Jerry Mack. He, oh, okay. did, he did like soup commercials and shit. You know? Who the fuck is he talking about? I know who that is. Who is he talking about? Think you know who he's talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Who? Yeah. Yeah. Who? McNabb. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on. But nah, we'll be fine. We'll be good. I think, I think we're going to make it far. Yeah, that's why. You don't think we're going to get like... Second round playoffs. I say at least second round. No, yeah, no. we whooped their ass too. We whooped the Giants' ass too. Yeah. Mm. So you can't even like have a, an opinion in this conversation right now. <laughs> um, I honestly, I grew up listening to like K. Slay and like um, uh, and all those Hot 97 guys, um, like Funkmaster Flex and K. Slay and Green Lantern and those guys and. I just, when I was growing up, I mean, they were always the dudes that were like, come on, you know, like, and, and you'd hear me, you just kind of get hyped. And then I also kind of have an EDM, you know, twist to it too, where um, I just see a lot of DJs do that. They just kind of like play music and they'll say stuff every once in a while. And EDM DJs especially, like, they'll jump around, but they won't address the crowd. And I just think that if you interact with people, they're more willing to want to interact with you. I think the skills that I have, I possess is that I can focus on my goals. Like I really, I'm really glad and really blessed that I can like sit down and work on a certain 
you know, goal or situation or and just like get to it instead of like playing around or procrastinating. I've never been like certain things I procrastinate like everybody, like nobody wants to get get up in the morning for school. I definitely procrastinate with that. But like or like in something I want, nah, I don't procrastinate on anything I want. I just go do it and I will work till I get it. Um skills I possess, I just work hard. I mean, that's really all I just work hard. I'm not the best at anything, you know what I mean? I'm not that different than anybody else. I just bust my ass and do whatever I gotta do to make it happen. Uh, that's really, I mean, I got a lot of luck on my side, and I'll be the first to say that, you know, but I also put myself in a position where I'm around the people I need to be around, and I just kind of put myself to be available. And, you know, other than that, um, I mean, I don't possess, like, any, like, super skills, you know? It's just be me and do everything I can for myself, my family, my friends, the people around me, that's it. Something to keep them... Tour, projects. Yeah, tour, projects. Um, videos. Not, not, not too, videos, yeah, nothing too special. I'm not, I'm not the guy that's about to be out here doing some weird shit for some attention, but... Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got? Another year of work. Just yeah. help my homies out, <laughs> help myself out. I'm about to have a kid. Oh man, yeah, congratulations. Everybody baby. congratulations to him, man. Uh, that's gonna change life a lot, but that makes me have to go even harder. So I'm gonna have the best year of my life. I didn't know that. So Damn. That was deep, dog. <laughs> Gotta have a kid. That just changed the whole mood of the interview. <laughs> It gives me more reason to go hard. It gives me more reason for God Daddy Chew to go hard too. <laughs> <laughs>